Welcome to video three. I want to take the concepts that we learned in the last video and apply it to elements like the width, the padding, and the margins on this particular template. I want to make sure that this design is able to adapt to different browser sizes, different browser widths. Now you could set um, the margins and padding and similar using M's, um, but that's generally used more for typography, something that's related to type itself. Um, so I'm going to be suggesting that you use percentages, and at least demonstrating percentages in this video. So the first step that I want to do is I want to change our wrapper, it sets at roughly about 900 pixels at the moment. I want to change that to something pretty close. I think I'm going to change it to 90%. And if I go in preview, you'll notice that not a whole lot has changed. Um, it might have shifted slightly. For example, if I extend the site, you'll notice that that background area does change. Notice how the site has expanded, just the contents within it haven't. So that'll give me a good place to start from. Um, obviously that 90% value is just kind of a rough value that I picked. Um, you might, and you probably do want to eventually, go back in and with CSS3 media queries add some sort of max width value to ensure that the site isn't displaying all the way across the browser. Um, obviously on very large monitors you don't want to have the user forced to view the entire site all the way across the width of whatever size browser he's using. So a max width helps make sure the site is sort of a reasonable size and it's easy to read for visitors. So starting with a 90% width um, we're basically going to use the same exact formula that we use for M's. We're just using it for percentages. So keep in mind that everything I'm doing is dealing with proportions. Um, I think I want to start with the main widths of things. And the primary one I want to start with is the width of our left and right columns. So here's the left column. You'll notice it's at 580 pixels. So to roughly get that proportion, we want to take 580 and divide it by the parent, which is here. It's roughly about 900 pixels based on our original design. So if I open up my calculator, I'm going to do 580 divided by 900. And that gets me this value. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in. But the difference here is we're dealing with percentages, not M's. So we need to adjust this decimal two points. So it's actually going to be 64% roughly. And I'll leave it up to you. Um, obviously, the more numbers after the decimal, the more accurate that number is. And we're dealing with computers here. So it's not like um, they don't understand this value. So I would just leave it the way it is. Don't worry about rounding those numbers down. I'm going to do the exact same thing with our right column. So it's 180 pixels. I'll open my calculator again. So 180 divided by the context, 900. So that's basically, that's 0.02. If you move the decimal over two places, that's 20%. There we go. So now if we preview, looks about the same as it did, but if we actually adjust the width of the site, you'll notice that these columns are also expanding. And in order to keep things going, I probably need to adjust this banner and the navigation as well. So let me find those. Um, the nav has a width of 900 pixels, and I can actually just set that to 100% instead, that should work. And it does. And then I also want to do the same thing um, to my banner element. And really the reason why that one isn't expanding is because we have this banner image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the color of this background banner 
and I'm going to use that and make that the background so it extends all the way across. I'm going to go to my style sheet, look up the banner section. I'm going to adjust a couple things. Um, rather than setting the line height and font size, I'm going to take those out. I'm going to set a 140 pixel height because that's the height of our banner. And then I'm going to add a background color. And it's going to be DD4F1B. That's that orange. So now if I test it, you'll notice the banner goes all the way across. And if I expand the width of the website, you'll notice how the banner seems to expand too. So now obviously this isn't a perfect solution. Um, for example, if you are dealing with a more complicated image, one that doesn't fade out to a solid color, but I'll be talking about dealing with responsive images in a later video, and we'll cover that in more detail. Next up, let's talk about margins and padding. Now, this template is a little bit difficult to give a demonstration of percentage-based margins simply because we don't have any left and right margins in our template. Um, but for the sake of example, let me go ahead and shift this box over, say about 40 pixels, and give you a demonstration of how to try percentage-based margins. So let me go ahead and find the right content here. So if I start with 40 pixels, you'll notice how it's been shifted over. And if I want to do percentage-based margins instead, it's going to be the exact same formula we've been using. Target divided by context equals result. And we're going to pull out our calculator. It's going to be 40 divided by the context, that parent element, which is roughly 900 pixels. So I'm going to copy that, paste, and then adjust the decimal place over two places. So it looks like that. And you'll notice how we get basically the same spacing, just with percentages rather than pixels. One other thing that I should mention while I think of it is if you're doing this method where you're pretty much starting with a pixel-based layout and then adjusting to percentages, you might want to keep those pixel values in place in your style sheet still in case you need to refer to them in the future. So for example, this width 20% is roughly about 180 pixels, and this width is 580 pixels just in case you ever need to do any other calculations based on these numbers, it's nice to have those pixel values handy. Now I've talked about margins and given you a quick demonstration of that. Padding is a little bit different. If you remember the CSS box model, you'll note how margins are considered outside of that box and padding is considered inside. And at least the way that I was taught was that when you do this calculation for percentage-based padding, the calculation changes a little bit because the context changes. It's not the width of the parent element that you want to wonder about, it's the width of the actual element you're adding padding to. However, I found on actually trying to put this into practice, it's a little bit hit or miss. Um, I haven't figured out the exact reasoning behind it yet, but I can give you a quick, quick example. So for example, say we want to take this 20 pixel padding and convert that into percentages instead. So I pull out my calculator. Here we go. So according to the way that I was taught, it would be 20 divided by the width of the element itself, which is roughly about 180. I'd copy that paste it, and adjust those values. So we get roughly around 11%. But when we go to test it, you'll notice how things have a little bit changed. I mean, we have some padding, and that's obviously good, but it seems to be a lot more padding than the original 20 pixels we specified. And what I figured out that it's doing is it's taking that 11% and it's still applying it to the full width of the parent element. So the proper calculation there, if 
I get my calculator out again, it's going to be 20 divided by that parent element, roughly 900, and copy and paste. So this time we get around a 2% value instead of 11%. And you notice it's much more what we expect. So I'm not exactly sure what this means realistically. Um, for example, the padding here seems to be based on the parent element. But if I try to do um, percentage-based padding, say, on the navigation, that seems to apply just to the width of the individual navigation item. So I'm a little confused about that, I have to admit. Um, if I figure out the solution, I will post and um, you know update this screencast. But just keep that in mind, um, that you may have to fiddle with the numbers slightly, and um, the context may change depending on the element you apply it to. Let's go back into our CSS and finish applying percentage-based padding to our different elements. Now, I'm only dealing with the left and right padding on things. Um, so we have padding here of 20 pixels on the wrapper. So let's go ahead and pull out the calculator. Let's see. Um, so we have roughly 20 divided by 900. So I'm going to copy and paste. There's that padding, and you notice it stays right about the same. Um, let's see if there's anything else. The H1 has a padding left of 20 pixels, um, so I believe we can do the same thing. Yep, I kept things the same. Um, keep in mind this is the H1 here. Um, then let's go ahead and adjust anything else. Here's where I said it gets a little bit tricky. Um, for example, let's say I apply that same 20 pixels left and right. And if you remember correctly, I just did that calculation. So it's 20 divided by 900 gives us this percentage value. But now if we check, you'll notice how small that padding value is. So it's going to be up to you, especially on these elements that don't have a fixed width, um, how you want to handle that. You might consider switching over to M's for that value because that's then not dependent on the exact width of the element. Um, you'll probably just need to pick something and just visually see what looks best. So let's try 2M. I mean, that's approximately what we had before. So you might just need to do some little minor tweaking here and there. Um, let's see if there's anything else. So there's 20 pixel padding on the content, left and right. And if you remember correctly, that's going to be the same value because that's 20 pixels. 20 divided by 900 gives us that percentage value. And I believe that's the end of the, let's see. Yep, that's the end of the changes needed on padding. So let's save it. And things look like they've stayed just about the same as they were before when we were using pixels. And now we shifted over to percent. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Um, for the most part, it seems like most elements deal, when you look at that um, target divided by context equals result calculation, that context is, mo in most cases, the parent element. Um, but there might be a couple cases, like with this navigation, where it seems based on the actual width of the element itself. Um, it might be a block versus inline element thing. Um, for example, this is a link, so that's inline by default, whereas these other elements were block elements, they're divs. So just something to keep in mind, and um, hopefully with a little bit of practice, you'll be able to figure out easily um, what context you should be using when you do these calculations. One final note for this video I thought I should mention. Paul Irish has a blog post on this box sizing property in CSS that you might want to take a look at. Um, basically, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the way the box model works currently is that 
the width of an element is based on not only the actual width but also any padding. Um, and this particular CSS property changes that so that padding is kind of considered inside the element and doesn't affect the actual width. And that can be really useful, for example, when you're dealing with an uh, element that you want to be 100% width, but then if you add padding on top of that, then that element becomes more than 100%. So there can be some tricky situations which you have to deal with. And using this little bit of CSS code, adding this box sizing property into your CSS, is one way that you can handle that. Um, there are some limitations on this. For example, it doesn't work in IE7 or lower, um, but all modern browsers support it, IE8 and above, Firefox, Chrome, etc. So if you are looking to ease some of the difficulty that can be involved with responsive layouts and you know percentage-based widths and padding and such, um, you might want to look here and do a little bit of experimenting with what he suggests in this article.